And welcome to another edition of the Leftist News Show. Uh, here's just a reminder of some of my uh, uh, merchandise. Let's go to uh, uh, Grand Party and Soda of News on Teespring. And I have everything from I had everything from masks, uh, tiny packs, looks like um, uh, shirts, cups, you name it. Uh, I have it as far as how far goes at in, interesting, well, decent prices, really. Uh, so go there, and we also have this one. So you can go over here, and since I've always said I'm a socialist, I have conversations, so conversation with a socialist. Uh, same overall things here. Uh, you can go to, uh, on, go on to uh, Teespring and look up a conversation with a socialist. Uh, let's see. And get this out of the way now. Oops. And I also have Patreon. Uh, get to that part now. There we go. So go to here and uh, pledge anything to one dollar to however much you want, but you get uh, pretty much exclusive stuff. Um, after a while, anyway. Uh, I'm also going to be putting up my um, upcoming interviews. I'll be having with the uh, peers and. Um, and, ten, and uh, candidates that are coming up. Anyway, let's go on with the show, I suppose. Let's see. Now, for some reason, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to stupidly um, compare George Floyd's death to Ashley Babbitt. Ashley Babbitt, uh, I guess, was one of the writers that got killed while trying to illegally trespass on the, on the nation's capital on uh, January 6th, by, if I read that right. Let's uh, see. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, that's what that's what she was trying to do that day. And she, I guess she got, she, I think she was probably the same person that tried to uh, uh, climb through the window and got shot in the head for doing it. Um, uh, yeah. So for her to sit, for her to sit, sit there and say that is truly um, idiotic. And I don't think that she should be in office in the first place. Uh, I think she ran unopposed because, well, uh, it's from Georgia or where? I think, yeah, Georgia. I think, yeah, I think she was unopposed. So nobody ran against her, which is okay. Uh, not really sure why nobody ran against her, but oh well, that's what's going on as far as the part goes. Yeah, she compared she compared George Floyd to Ashley Babbitt, two different things, um, two different two different. Uh, you know, one was a tragedy, one was a lawful uh, lawful thing that happened. If if you try to like uh, do a, a revolution based off false facts, then yeah, maybe maybe you should get a killed who knows that's that I, i'm saying that based on an idiotic uh, comparison that she makes there anyway let's see now i try to look i try to look up on it we're clear politics uh who backs such uh, schumer and obviously new york and he's been he's been in office for a while uh, Wall Street and other people back him, obviously. Uh, there is some uh, energy uh, energy companies that do back him, but nothing like uh, there's no coal or oil that I saw anyway. But yeah, that, I'm, this is obviously a, a political stunt. Um, yeah, uh, it's not in quotes, but it should be in quotes. Uh, to fight uh, New York City's private ele electric companies from Building new gas fire plants, uh, when a powerful new ally. Okay. Uh, let's see. I wonder how many of his colleagues uh, did did paid or backed by them as far as uh, the gas and oil industry. So I just think that it's all a political stunt. Uh, he is up for re-election, and there are at least uh, I think one MMT here that is gunning for him, as well as. Um, at uh, Kate, or was it, uh, Congress Kate is also going for him. Uh, she's in the Green Party. So he at least has some competition as far as that part goes. Let's see. 
I have quite a few things here to really talk about. Uh, I guess he wants uh, Biden to sign executive order uh, aimed at uh, promoting competition ac across the economy. Uh, now I can't remember how legal executive orders are. From what I imagine they they can be quite legal unless uh, unless what they want to sign is not legally viable. Otherwise, they, maybe they aren't as legal as anything else. Well, let's see. Labor markets, uh, by is calling for a federal tax commission to ban or limit uh, non-compete agreements, which keep workers from leaving employer for positions at rival firms. So the only thing I can compare that to is I knew a few people who uh, were like uh, cosmetologists or hairstylists that tried to go from one place to another to like, because they weren't getting enough shifts at, uh, at a different one, or uh, they they were they had more clientele at one and the other, and when they tried to go to the one where they were making more money, because the other one was more of a corporation, while the one that they had more uh, uh, customer base at was an independent um, uh, shop, they got they got fired from the corporate one because it was a conflict of interest. So uh, maybe this will actually if it takes effect and if it's deemed legal and it can't be done then it might be good for those who are in uh in one industry that are wishing to go to another company within that same industry without without uh getting uh by getting fired or however whatever happens in that, in that regard uh because they're because they decided to uh change uh companies let's see so let's see, Biden believes that if someone offers you a better job, you should be able to take it. I mean, it makes sense, said uh, Jen Psaki. Okay, let's see, what's this? Technology, crack down on big tech companies arguing that they are, that they gather too much information on consumers. Well, then maybe you should like, you know, I don't know, uh, repeal, um, uh, what's that called? The, um, oh, there's something act right now. I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, the Patriot Act, I think it is, uh, where they where they use uh, tele telecommunications uh, and uh, tech companies to spy on everybody pretty much to a certain degree. Um, and maybe I should have cracked down on that as well. Anyway, let's see. Over the past 10 years, the largest tech platforms have acquired uh, hundreds of companies, including alleged uh, killer acquisitions meant to shut down a potential competitive threat. Oh, no, or they want to shut down Amazon because they, that's exactly what they've done in the past. Uh, that Walmart, Walgreens, and other big conglomerates have done the same thing to, to smaller companies. Uh, so now they want to, now he wants to uh, help the uh, quote unquote little guy get back on their feet in regards to that. Um, how about you tax them a little bit more, not to not to uh, to fund any of this, but to um, take take the uh, inequality uh, a portion of it out, a portion of it out. Let's see, healthcare. Let's see. President directing federal agencies to take steps towards reducing uh, drug prices for consumers. Last I checked, this is still up to the fact that Medicare Part D, unless it's something else I don't know about this or uh, about that legislation in particular, uh, they would have to rewrite, repeal and rewrite it. But under this uh, electoral circumstances, maybe this will maybe this will make it better. I don't know. We'll find out, I suppose. But I do think it might be good as far as being able to bring prescription drugs from Canada and other things. The problem with that is more of a Bernie Sanders talking point. Um, but I do know that uh, that medicine from Canada, like insulin and other things of the nature, are a lot cheaper uh, because apparently they don't necessarily have a profit uh, motive behind it. Let's see. It also might be good if uh, the United States uh, started to, uh, with, I know they have pens in regards to that because they they, they, they have to, or 
uh, at least uh, uh, rent out those, those patents to be able to make the lower uh, lower cost uh, prescription drugs. <sighs> yeah, I don't know much about that, unfortunately. I should probably bone up on that. Anyway, uh, and also, uh, since I'm in Ohio and Governor DeWine is my governor, I, I decided to start uh, implementing more of his type of news and his background and all that stuff so that for you who do watch and listen to my content, once thank you very much, thank you for that. But also uh, you can also see at least that stuff in Ohio is being uh, looked at and uh, being reported and commented on actually. Anyway, uh, see Department of Health, uh, Health and Human Services must issue plan uh, must must issue a plan within 45 days to fight high prices and price gouging within 120 days. So again, they should probably allow in Part D to uh, have let, allow government to be able to uh, negotiate down uh, drug prices because that's that's most of the reason why. Um, uh, the elderly can't really afford much regards to medicine or to be in this be in the same system because the ACA, ACA, yeah, ACA uh, doesn't allow for for uh, for patients to go anywhere they want. They have to stay within a a uh, a system. And I'm not sure how many uh, pharmaceutical companies, hospitals doctors or whatever else are in, are in place in that system, but that, um, but that uh, constrains a lot of people who may be in rural areas who, like in my case, while I was in Seattle, uh, I couldn't get uh, glasses from a certain places because they wouldn't take my insurance, which at that time was, um, which was um, a United Healthcare dual, but it was the wrong kind of dual. It wasn't just uh, I go in there, uh, they say that, that there's like a little shelf of glasses that are friends that I could, I could choose from and go on from there. Uh, it's more or less like, okay, what, um, uh, who is your insurance provider? Where, uh, what system are they in? And are we in that system? And if we are in that system, um, how much are they willing to pay? That kind of thing. But it's something like a Medicare for all um, or to that degree, uh, everybody would be covered because everybody would be paying a little bit of extra or actually don't even have to do that actually to think about it because, well, according to MMT, uh, money uh, is, uh, hmm. during these kind of things, it's kind of hard for me to get into this because uh, that's where they, they parallel. Because I'm still learning a lot about MMT. Um, I do know that uh, we are a sovereign country and we don't have outside debt and, we're able, and we have the uh, capabilities uh, and the resources to be able to, um, uh, in a way, print money to be able to be put in, in, into the economy um, and so that that could actually pay for a lot of things as long as, now again, I'm, I'm still learning all this and Right now, my mind's not exactly on MMT. My mind more on this kind of stuff, but I guess it does kind of uh, come together to a certain degree because we don't actually need tax to be able to pay for this. We actually don't. The only thing they have to do is pay is is uh, um, uh, voting uh, voting legislation to allow this to happen, and the uh, the Congress uh, appropriates the amount of money that is going to be, would be required for that. And just tell us that okay, so appropriate this amount of money to to these places that will that uh, would be doing that kind of job. That's exactly how that happens. Taxes only allow taxes from what I am from what I've learned so far only allow for uh, like inf uh, like deflationary purposes with regards to um, not too much money be in the system. That's why the Fed just had to uh, repose, you know, take out money from the uh, from the system in order to make sure that the interest rates stay low and make sure that there's that there's no, uh, uh, um, I guess, uh, heating of of, of the uh, of the uh, money supply. Anyway, that's a different thing right there. I'll get, I'll get into that in a, in a few moments after I get to this. Anyway, let's see. Transportation. Again, all of this is based on 
Congress getting their heads out of their tails and voting infrastructure payments and taking away the that uh, self-imposed constraint called the debt ceiling. Because the debt ceiling was put in by people who think they know anything about money. They actually don't. They, all, they only know about being users and not uh, issuers. Um, Congress, uh, through its spending bills, are the issuers of that money. So, yeah, uh, anyway. <sighs> so all this is just basically up to Congress voting it in and then telling the, telling the Fed uh, and the Treasury to allocate that money to where they need to go. And that would create jobs uh, at the $50 minimum wage that is required to live to a certain degree uh, in today's marketplace. Anyway, let's see. Okay, what else? Yeah, uh, this. Okay, so basically, uh, Kyle Ron, uh, well, I was going to say Ron House, but sure, well, uh, Ron House, uh, also known as Ron House, um, claims he opened fire at BLM protest because the victim had, was convicted sex offender. Uh, let's see, look on his face is more or less like that's about as good as any uh, anything as far as um uh not plea what do you call that um um uh, anyway yeah but good you read in the same court there we go a lawyer for Kyle Rottenhouse or Rittenhouse uh, the teenager accused of fatally shooting two demonstrators and wounding another at a Black Lives Matter protest last summer claimed this week that he'd gunned down one victim because he was a sex offender. Was it, wait, was it uh, Ron House from a different uh, state? So how would he know as far if, if that person was or was not a person who was or uh, were not uh, sex offenders? Maybe he's a sex offender. But anyway, um, according to uh, a Motion filed in court Thursday, uh, Ron House uh, legal team is arguing that the teen opened fire on or opened fire Joseph uh, Rosenbaum in Kenosha because the man wasn't legally able to own his own gun due to his criminal record. Okay, yeah, we know that. As convicted felon and sex offender, he was unable to legally possess a firearm he was uh, seeking to steal from my client. Okay, um, that makes no sense, but whatever. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, uh, Ron House shot and killed Rosenbaum and Anthony Hooper uh, during citywide protests following the uh, police shooting of Jacob Blake on uh, August 20, uh, August 2020. Um, Ron House was it was charged with first degree intentional homicide. First degree reckless homicide and the first degree intentional reckless homicide. Uh, Ron House uh, has cl uh, claimed he opened fire in self defense. Uh, okay, uh, um, earlier in the same thing, his lawyer said that uh, he was trying, that the guy was trying to get the gun away from him. How can you fire on him if he was in self defense? Or maybe I'm misunderstanding that part. Maybe I am. I mean, self-defense, you're, you're wrestling with it. Okay, maybe self-defense. But as far as I know about their footage out there uh, showing that uh, Rotten House went up to them and started blasting. I don't think there's any footage of them wrestling. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Someone in the comment section, if there's a comment section, you guys let me know. Uh, put down a link or some of that and I'll go look at it. And yeah, anyway. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so Dimitri, whatever the heck his last name is, says it, uh, he thinks it's a creative strategy. A uh, adjunct uh, assistant professor uh, at J College uh, Criminal Justice told Oxygen.com. Okay. Uh, I think the lawyer is duty bound to present that strategy. It's every lawyer's duty to look into and present uh, every available defense that is sound in law, that is part of ze uh, zealously advocating for your client. 
the Brooklyn legal account, uh, scholar said the, the approach laid out by uh, Rotten House uh, lawyers and motions filed this week could be difficult to swing, no kidding, as a credit, uh, credible defense. Rotten House's attorneys, uh, Shock Nevik, uh, explained, ultimately must prove the teenager was in imminent danger when he pulled the trigger. Yeah, I don't think that if someone is unarmed and trying to take a gun from you, you're not in imminent danger. They are, as far as the park goes, and they're trying to wrestle a, uh, a loaded weapon from you. Okay. okay, so let's see, here's one of the things about, uh, about my governor. Um, Let's see, this is, this is a part of the corruption portion I'm looking at. Uh, Ohio Governor DeWine, who owns Pfizer stock, has received 22700 in contributions from the drug company since 20, 2018. Governor DeWine unexpectedly called a press conference on Monday, which means this guy double checked the date here. This was, um, okay, so this was last year. So I'm just more, more or less showing that uh, that he does do things that are um, uh, does he does do things that I would look at as a hypocritical nature. Um, anyway, so let's see, Governor DeWine unexpectedly called a press conference on Monday. It was the day uh, the Pfizer company arrived in Ohio. DeWine called it historic or hope in the beginning of the end of COVID. A video of him of he and first lady Fran DeWine can be viewed uh, okay below yeah as you can see that. Uh, you guys can go out there and uh, the Ohio uh, star and dot com and look at it also. Uh, the star asked governor from a viewer a two-part question regarding your potential ties to drug makers. First, do you own and uh, do you own stock in Pfizer and Moderna? And did these companies contribute to your campaign? pre or post the gubernatorial uh, fund. Second, many people have diversified holdings of pharma, uh, so that would be understandable, but in the, pa in the past as a US Senator, you received criticism for approving immunization for drug makers from accountability uh, for, harm, for harm that drugs do. While holding pharma stock uh, as Ohio Attorney General, you received criticism for stock and companies that uh, an AG's legal action can affect the value of. Now, as governor, do you see it as a conflict of interest, holdings and contributions, since you are a primary policymaker and have encouraged millions of Ohioans to take vaccines from companies you may have ties to? And of course, his response is, I don't know uh, if we own any stock, apparently he does, um, but, but we will find out uh, very quickly and make that public. So look, I, I don't think there's any conflict. I hope, uh, sorry, I had, and then uh, apparently down below is a contribution for, wait, this, okay, anyway. Um, the star, okay, so the star obtained copies of his uh, 2017, 18, and 19 financial disclosure statements and found that he does indeed own common stock in Pfizer, not a mutual fund containing share, uh, not a mutual fund containing share of the company. The disclosure does not list the value of the shares, but it is greater than 1,000 if it is listed in the report. See, furthermore, DeWine owns share uh, Mesa Labs. The company, according to their website, provides safe, uh, safety related products. We offer to uh, pharmaceutical, healthcare, and medical uh, and by, uh, device industries that's the forefront of COVID 19. So, in other words, they are pocketing a lot of money when people are dying, pretty much. That's pretty much why I've gotten from it. But uh, uh, yeah, all this, let's see if I can. Uh, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe guys. Maybe not. Okay. And uh, no, no, that's the medicine right here. Now, I, I guess to kind of get off the last bite I did, uh, there's another part uh, that I think is kind of hypocritical. Now, I, I don't know how many, how many of you guys, um, 
know of Republicans or pro-life uh, people who say that, um, that the government should stay out or defund places like Planned Parenthood and all that stuff, which uh, delivers um, safe abortions, but mostly they do uh, contraception and counseling. And this one, he is basically uh, saying that he wants to uh, fund a pro-life pregnancy centers, protect pro-life doctors. This is or this month, so this is more of a recent one. So, uh, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has signed the state budget to into law with pro-life provisions that would fund pro-life pregnancy centers protect pro-life medical professionals. Now, I'm not really sure where the pro-life professionals were in any danger of losing anything in regards to licenses or anything of that nature. So that, that in itself is kind of misleading because I don't think they've ever been in danger of losing their practices for, uh, for advocating for pro-life. I mean, maybe they uh, got criticized for, you know, maybe saying their belief system far too much, but I mean, whatever. Uh, previously, the Ohio legislature, uh, the Ohio legislature passed a bi biennial uh, operating budget, which maintained uh, several key pro uh, life provisions, including funding for pregnancy centers that provide help for pregnant women and save babies from abortion. Making uh, lawmakers include five, no, six million for the Ohio Parenting and Pro uh, Pregnancy Program, which provides funding for pregnancy centers. The budget also includes pro-life provisions which protect parents' uh, conscience rights. Governor DeWine signed the budget uh, late last night, before obviously the thirtieth, the thirtieth, uh, when the uh, state's new fiscal year begins. Uh, the budget includes medical ethics and uh, diversity or MED Act, which uh, ensures doctors and medical professionals cannot be forced to perform medical procedures that violate their, their, uh, their religion, basically, or uh, con science um, beliefs. Uh, such as abortions. It also allows insurance companies to create insurance plans for businesses and organizations in line with their religious beliefs, resolving the, resolving the issue on uh, an order of nuns called the Little Sisters of the Poor uh, faced for wanted, uh, wanting a plan that doesn't include abortion coverage. Now, as far as I know about, the only, the only uh, law that's um, they were fighting against that had some to that effect was the ACA, and that was based on a business that was that was that the business model was based on religion. Um, okay, I can understand that, and depend on the pre, the person who works there. Um, but I think they should be more of a more or less a nonprofit because they are they they are a business. Uh, and if they hire someone who may not be of that faith, uh, then they would be on the business side of things, which means if a business uh, under the ACA is required to um, is required to uh, to fund uh, uh, not abortion but uh, but like condoms and whatever else. Um, in, in the insurance uh, side of things, then so be it. But if you are, doing something to this effect and they want businesses to be able to do that, then that would be, I think, a conflict between church and state. Now, I know that a lot of people, a lot of people would say, well, there's been like, there's been that for, for I don't know how long when it comes to uh, churches contributing to uh, campaigns and whatnot. So, I mean, that's a violation of church and state as well. Um, so I think this whole thing is a violation of church and state. Uh, if you're a business and you're a uh, and you are paying B and O taxes, then fine. But if you are a business that is kind of like what a church would be, like that's a business. You take money in. You have pre uh, you have um, oh not prisoners but um, patrons. As I've noticed that even in Seattle, uh, there's a couple of churches that call their prisoners patrons. Um, 
then you know, words like that tend to make you a regular business, which you should be paying B and O taxes, estate taxes, and whatever else taxes that a uh, company would need to uh, pay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, capital gains tax, whatever else. Uh, because they are a church, they don't have to do that. And as far as I know, but I may be wrong about that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, I have to get to this. Uh, so the, yeah, this just stinks of um, uh, violation in every sense of the word, as far as the part goes. Uh, let's see, Mike, uh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce the last name, Pre president of the Ohio Right to Life told Life News com that he's pleased with the pro-life provisions and funding for pregnancy centers, right? Uh, these pro-life provisions in our budget protect women, religious freedom, and our school uh, school uh, age uh, age children. How do how do they protect uh, school age children? Um, how do they protect religious freedom? I'm not really sure about either one of those, really. I mean, it's, I mean, the only part of the religious part is that they they would get to uh, do more harm to kids who may have gotten pregnant at 15, 16, or 17, and they may or may not be a part of a religious family. Otherwise, I don't really see that, but maybe I'm, I don't know. Um, Anyways, we have numerous stories of medical professionals, especially nurses who have been required to participate in uh, certain medical procedures that trouble their cons uh, conscience or conscience, basically, or go against the teachings of their faith. Yeah, this is what, yeah, again, that's where you're supposed to separate your religious beliefs from your work. Um, but anyway. Furthermore, funds are being directed to help support local programs directed to maternal health and support for pregnant mothers, funding to strengthen character-based sexual risk avoidance education programs in our schools and to expand the successful parenting and, pro and pregnancy program in Ohio. Oh, I see. So basically, they're basically saying, well, these just kids. Have kids. You have a safe place to you have a safe place to do it, or not, not not the sex part, but the the having the kids part, uh, the birth and all that stuff. Okay, so yeah, definitely more of a here's a favor to the church sort of thing. I still think it's fucked. I don't think you should be doing that. I think you should be uh, taking the church, uh, the, separating the church from the state. But in my opinion, I'm, I'm not religion, I'm not religious. Uh, see. Uh, Ohio lawmakers send budget with tax cuts, new school funding formula to uh, DeWine. This was from last month, so at least it's still within, within this year. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Ohio lawmakers finally settled a $75 billion two-year spending plan that cuts income taxes, creates a new school funding formula, and allows college athletes to make money out their frame. Now, last part I agree with, but I also agree they should, be, they should be paying tax on that. Ohio lawmakers sent the bipartisan, uh, okay, let me just kind of mention what I just said. I think they should be able to uh, to pay tax on those, but say you get a gift or whatever else, I can see that being not taxable as far as that part goes, but I don't know. Ohio lawmakers sent the, the bipartisan budget to Governor DeWine mon uh, Monday evening following an 8 to 13, uh, 8 to 13 vote in Ohio uh, House and 32 to 1 vote in Ohio Senate. Uh, Sen uh, Senator Teresa uh, Fedor, uh, a Democrat, uh, was the sole no vote in that chamber. DeWine has a deadline. He must sign the bill before Thursday. Uh, here comes uh, here's some of the tax cuts, uh, tax cuts, refunds. Republicans who controlled the House and Senate wanted to cut taxes uh, by di by uh, different amounts. They finally landed on across the board in uh, in income cut, tax cut of three percent, the minimum amount Ohioans can earn before paying, uh, and any income tax uh, was also raised to twenty five thousand. 
and lawmakers eliminated the top income tax bracket for wealthy residents. Well, they, okay, so they, so they eliminated that top income tax bracket, so that means they don't have to pay that tax income. Um, I think we want to be competitive, says Matt Dillon, um, Dolan, or however you want to call it, a Republican from uh, Chagrin Falls, okay, and only Indiana now is lower than us in our surrounding states. All total, the budget uh, will be costing $1.64 billion. That, it, that would be, it's costing the city, or state, I mean, $1.64 billion. That means it's taking money out of the economy, which more than likely means it'll be less uh, funding for schools. And let me, let me go with that and see what that's about. Uh, one of the biggest challenges of the budget was to deciding on a formula for funding Ohio's K-12 public schools. So it seems like they may have just defunded a lot of it, but maybe I'm wrong about that. They went with the House plan, but made the changes and change effective for just two years. The, uh, that, the work does not end today, Ohio. Okay. Um, lawmakers must commit themselves to push this uh, adequate and equitable funding from the across the finish line. The House plan changes, changes the way schools get money from the state in a number of significant ways. An example, the state will look at both local incomes and property values to determine how much a district should be able to cover on its own. Okay, so it looks like they, uh, maybe I'm wrong about this, but it looks like they may be uh, putting up a uh, salt tax and their base amount cost of education to average kid would be based on local costs instead of a single statewide average. One part of the Senate education plan that did make it into the final budget was an increase in the Ed Choice scholarships, uh, often, uh, often called vouchers. The annual amounts will be going to 5,500 per year to graduates, uh, eight through, uh, K through eight and 7,500 for high school. Okay, so that sounds like a set amount in regards to that. But the governor's well wellness dollar uh, dollars are out. Uh, De Dewine has asked for one billion to be uh, specifically de designated for uh, wraparound services like school uh, counselors, lawmaker uh, lawmakers didn't cut the money from the education budget. Instead, they folded it into uh, the increase in the overall funding uh, formula. Okay. Now, abortion abortion providers. Okay, maybe that's where they cut it. Uh, the budget includes language that targets two Southwest uh, Ohio abortion clinics currently operating under an exception a, exemption to state law uh, state law called variance. Um, state law requires every abortion clinic to have a transfer agreement with a local private ho local and private hospital in case of emergency. Instead. Uh, Planned Parenthood of Southwest Ohio in Mount Auburn and Women's Med in uh, Dayton operate under a variance in which they list uh, four doctors wanting to help if needed. Uh, changes in the budget would require those doctors to work within 25 miles of the clinic and bar them from teaching at public hospitals or medical schools. Okay. Now, that is a problem for women's men whose doctors teach at Wright State University's uh, Boone Shop uh, School of Medicine. Okay, so they are they're trying to, in a way, handicap um, the abortion uh, hospitals there, which would give them less money. Okay, so that's, that money, unfortunately, would be going from the abortion part to the school. Um, so it seems like, anyways, uh, changes in the budget would require those doctors work. Okay, I'm worried about that. The budget also includes six million over two years for anti-abortion crisis pregnancy centers. Well, if I just read a, I just read one thing that said that he was that he was putting money in. Oh, maybe it's six million actually. Come to think of it, maybe that was it. Anyway, uh, the food assistance. So our SNAP. Uh, so this is what I did actually. Uh, in the set, uh, a set, uh, an asset test for Ohioans who receive 
help buying groceries from the from SNAP was removed from the final version of the state budget. Lawmakers also eliminated uh, Senate proposal to require folks not, to notify the program, notify the program of a change in income that was more than 500. Okay, uh, let's see, so let me read that first part again. An asset test for Ohioans who received help buying groceries from the SNAP uh, program was removed from the final version of the budget, so maybe they kept that in. Um, lawmakers also, okay, I'm sorry about that part. Uh, we want them to have food on their table so they have, so they can take care of their families. So, uh, uh, they represent from, from Canton. Uh, now this is the part where it's kind of mentioning as far as the college uh, athlete. The budget has included language that would allow college students to benefit off their own name, image, and likeness through endorsements and other deals. Students could hire agents to benefit off their uh, collegiate fame. They could uh, not and they could not endorse uh, alcohol, tobacco, uh, and adult entertainment uh, or casinos. I mean, if they're 18, well, I can see that. No, they they are still in school. So yeah, okay. Dwine signed an executive order Monday to allow NIL, uh, but uh, adding the language to the state budget would make it permanent. Both approaches would take effect by Thursday, which. Would be uh, BSA. No, no, anyway. I'd be actually, yeah. Uh, and important deadline because other states uh, have NIL laws that would take effect on that date. Electronic bingo. Uh, lawmakers added language to legalize electronic instant bingo, known as e bingo, at veterans and fraternal organizations. In other words, they basically just put, uh, they took the they took uh, bingo from being a paper waste to being an electronic waste. Um, but veterans and fraternal uh, organizations, organizations already approved to offer bingo can have up to 10 single person terminals to offer a bingo and make money off that, I'm assuming. Um, opponents of e bingo work at that would lead to uh, proliferation of slot machines like gambling across the state, even though Ohio Constitution bans many types of gambling. Now, yeah, I can see that actually. Uh, we, we, uh, we feel that we feel there are adequate safeguards in the legislation to protect from a large expansion of gambling in Ohio, uh, uh, the person said. I'm sure it will help those fraternal organizations that are very charitable in their particular communities. The Ohio General, uh, Ohio Attorney General, and Ohio Casino uh, Control Commission uh, will uh, regulate uh, your bingo. Interesting. State funded child care. Another disagreement between the House and Senate and Governor was over how the state decides which uh, child care providers can accept kids uh, on public assistance. The step up uh, to quality uh, writing system requires. Providers to uh, have at least one of uh, five stars in order to get state dollars, but it was set to rise to a three star minimum in the coming year. Senate Republicans said the star requirements were too burdensome and wanted to eliminate them. In other words, who cares if the if the facility may be uh, underrun, underfunded, and so on and so forth. Uh, wanted to make them instead, lawmakers decided to keep the one star minimum and study the overall effectiveness of the program. Uh, we're still not happy with where it is. This is better than the, this is better than the Senate version. Erica probably, uh, I guess, one of my representatives, I don't know. Uh, the budget also raised the amount families could earn while they received child care assistance to 142% of federal poverty or about 30,000 for a family of three. Uh, sex education, uh, okay. Uh, Republicans add a requirement that schools notify parents if they decide to go beyond uh, abstinence only and teach additional instructions in uh, venereal disease or sexual uh, education. So they have to pretty much say, is it okay if I teach your child how to put a condom on? Anyway, uh, the require require uh, the rule requires schools to give parents the names of any vendors, teachers, and curricula that they will be used that, that will be used. 
I thought they would be doing that in the beginning of the year. Like, here's what your kid will be taught here. Okay, Medicaid, something else I'm on. Uh, Senate Republicans agree to uh, scrap their plans to start the bidding process over on uh, Medicaid's managed care system. The six companies chosen from that process will keep their winning con uh, contract, but the budget bill included changes for the next round of bidding. The bill also extends the time a new mother is covered by Medicare or Medicaid rather to one year after delivery. Okay, so I've got internet access here, a grant program to help cover the cost of laying internet cables across Ohio is back in the budget with 250 million appropriate appropriation. That's the exact amount that DeWine wanted and it's 50 million more than what the House initially recommended. The final budget agreed and also acts a proposal to limit local governments from offering broadband services. So in other words, depending on the highest bidder as far as contract, uh, like Comcast or um, Frontier or whomever else, uh, they get to monopolize the area in regards to their um, services, it sounds like. Uh, the budget, uh, yeah, but, mm, let's see, yeah, so that means that, say if Columbus is not uh, happy with the uh, state-funded uh, um, um, internet uh, uh, company, they can't uh, go out and try to find something else for, you know, to offer uh, the uh, surrounding area. Or maybe that's just for the business, uh, the, uh, the government side of things. I don't know. Even the final budget agreement also, okay, I already right. part of it, that one. Okay, well, there goes that part. Now you kind of know what's going on in regards to Ohio. Maybe you don't live in Ohio. Okay, so let's see. All right. Yeah, this is kind of more of an Ohio heavy day, it looks like. Um, the lawmakers prohibit private groups from helping Ohio Secretary of State on voter outreach letter, uh, capital letter. Okay, so let's see. No private option. The recent, uh, the recent, uh, recently passed state budget uh, bill includes uh, language voting rights activists fear could be used to block Secretary of State Frank LaRose and his future counterparts from working with private organizations to conduct uh, voter outreach. I don't see why a state, would, a state would be involved in the electoral process other than counting the fucking votes. If you're a Democrat or Republican and you have a big enough uh, clientele base, you should be able to just sit there and send them out shit or have it on some kind of news or whatever else and do propaganda. Uh, that's, I think that's a good thing in regards to separating the two. Uh, as uh, Andrew T T T Tobias, some of that writes the language, is a response to 2020 when state and county elections officials accepted millions of dollars of grants from Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg but the language, uh, language not only bans elections officials from accepting private grants, but also says they can't collaborate with private organizations on getting out the vote, absentee votes, or any other election activities. I think that's a good thing, because if they have enough network, they should be able to freaking lay out some dough and freaking buy some advertising on, the, on those kind of platforms. Not sit there and just like, and have a contract with them. Every station I have a contract with Facebook or Twitter or, or anything else to like uh, propagate their their own party shit. Uh, they should be able to like, okay, let's buy some ad space here. Not, hey, let's let's do this. You can get some tax write offs while we do this. But the language uh, not only bans the elections officials from accepting private grants, but also uh, okay, uh, uh, can collaborate with private organizations on getting the vote, uh, vote out, absentee voting, or any other elections activity. Lawmakers say the provision isn't meant to block routine outreach, uh, outreach but uh, voting rights activists said they aren't sure how the new law would be enforced. Well, if you're not sure, then why pitch? Okay, down to business. State employees in Cleveland and Columbus have started to return to their office this week 
in a, a phased in return continuing through September. Uh, they've been working remotely since uh, March 13th last year. Laura Hancock reports the uh, Ohio Civil Service Employees Association says it's planned to push for more remote working options in the future. Next month, First Energy Corps will issue a one-time customer refund for its controversial decoupling charge as required under the partial repeal of the scandal-tainted House Bill 6 Energy Bill, or Energy Law, as Jeremy Pulitzer reports exactly. Okay. Ooh, uh, let's see what's that? <laughs> um, Okay, so you can't always get what you want. Well, uh, DeWine appeared happy with with how the state's new two-year budget turned out. He didn't end up with the he didn't end up with everything he wanted. As Pulitzer explained, state lawmakers stripped out a number of proposals from the governor's original budget plan from proposed fifty million uh, uh, fifty million ad campaign to attract new residents to a variety of gun reforms. It's called keeping your prices low enough. Where people and where places like Seattle, New York, California, others kind of you know throw their their customer on their residents now because they're paying too damn much. Anyway, um, Ohio's casinos and uh, racinos, just racetracks, took uh, in uh, 196.8 million in gambling revenue after paying out winnings in June. Uh, Eric uh, Heising uh, reports. This marks the fourth all-time highest month of revenue after Mar uh, March, April, and May. Dem in the Secretary of State race, uh, Chelsea Clark, a Democrat, Democratic City Councilwoman from Forest Park in Hamilton County, announced she's running for Ohio Secretary of State next year. She's entered the race criticized the Republican Ohio Secretary uh, uh, Frank LaRose of uh, voter roll purges and voter suppression, the inquire, uh, the inquirers, uh, Jeff, Jesse Belmarks reports. Uh, Non-team player, Sports Illustrated, Stanley K writes a, a profile that Republican U.S. Uh, Representative Anthony Gonzalez of Rocky, of Rocky River compares some of his sports uh, feeds as a former Buckeye and NFL right wide receiver with his current battle to keep his seat. After voting to impeach former President Donald Trump, which I thought was good, uh, for the January 6th U.S. Capitol insurrection, Gonzalez discussed his roots as Cuban American. Okay. Okay, so abortion provision removed, a provision in an earlier version of the budget bill that may have shuttered Dayton's only abortion clinic was removed before the bill passed. The Dean uh, Daily News, uh, Jordan, wait a minute, this is a, uh, I, I think I'm forgetting something here. Oh, okay, no, it's one day ago. All right, yeah, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'll go back down here. Okay, so the plan was removed from the bill before it passed. Uh, Dean uh, Daily News, uh, Jordan, later reports the provision added two requirements on clinics that couldn't get transfer agreements with local, yeah, okay, I've read that already. Uh, we're under uh, operating under variants from the okay, yeah, this I have already uh, done that. See, um, okay. not too much I wanted to say on that one. Okay, went for this in a little bit, as you can see. Right. Okay. So this one, let's see. This one is entitled uh, Ohio allows doctors to deny LGBTQ health care on moral grounds. Okay. So as you can see, I think I've already demonstrated that Ohio is more for religious zealots than they are for, you know, um, you know individual rights, despite the fact that um, they call for individual rights. Obviously, unless it's about, about them, then like now. Okay. Um, and the latest uh, state level swing at LGBTQ health access, Ohio will allow will not allow medical providers to refuse to administer any medical treatment that violates their moral, ethical, or religious beliefs. So join a church. Uh, the language was buried in a 700 page 
document of last minute amendments, of course, the last minute one, to uh, the state's two year budget bill, which uh, Governor um, Mike DeWine uh, approved last Thursday. The provision allows anyone providing Medicare medical care from doctors and nurses to researchers and uh, lab techs and anyone paying for that care, namely insurance providers, the freedom to decline to perform participant uh, in or participate in or pay for any other uh, services which violates the practitioners, institutions, or uh, payers' con uh, conscience uh, as informed by the moral, ethical, or religious beliefs. The bill does not allow uh, the bill does not allow medical professionals to deny LGBTQ people care uh, carte blanche. The exception is limited to conscience-based uh, objection to a particular health care service. If uh, it goes on to say that the provider is responsible for providing all appropriate health care services other than the particular health care service that conflicts with the medical practitioner's beliefs or convictions until another medical practitioner or facility is available. But the bill uh, was overwhelmingly opposed by the state's medical community. Okay, when the community itself opposes something that that is <laughs> that you're trying to do for the religious zealots, if they, if they oppose it, then there's no chance that it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't go through anyway. Uh, but the, as I said, but the bill was overwhelmingly opposed by the state's medical community. Uh, the implications of this policy are immense and could lead to situations where patient care is unacceptably compromised by a letter to uh, budget negotiators signed by the Ohio Hospital Association. The Ohio Children's Hospital Association, the Ohio State Medical Association, and the Ohio uh, Association of the Health Plans. Governor DeWine could have struck, uh, struck the language while signing the rest of the budget uh, into law, but declined to do so, despite issuing 14 other line term uh, line item vetoes. State and national LGBTQ advocates started sounding the alarm in June when the language was introduced, saying that it will prevent LGBTQ people from accessing the health care they need. With the newly enacted language in place, a medical provider uh, could refuse to uh, prescribe a PRF a PrEP to, to an LGBTQ patient looking to reduce their risk of contracting HIV or refuse to provide gender affirmation care to trans and non-binary non patients or puberty blockers to transgender minors. Uh, equal uh, Equality Ohio called it a license to discriminate and human rights campaign. President Alfonso uh, David said that it jeopardized as the medical well-being of more than 380,000 LGBTQ people in Ohio. Well, maybe they should have thought about that before they backed Clinton in, 20, in, in, uh, in 20, uh, um, 2016. If they would have backed uh, Bernie Sanders, who has a longer history of uh, backing uh, LGBTQ rights, then this one this wouldn't be a, a, um, a possibility as far as I'm concerned, because other things would have actually happened within the court system that prevented this kind of shit. I think. Anyway, um, let's see. Oh, I'm I'm actually referring to the uh, the uh, HRC, by the way, not not Ohio, obviously, as far as that part goes. I'm just trying to separate the two in regards to that. Anyway, um, let's see, President Alfonso Davis said that it jeopardized the medical well-being of more than 380,000 LGBT, LGBTQ uh, people in Ohio. Hmm. Okay. I don't know why I said why I just said that, but I did. <laughs> and nothing to do with Clinton, but anyway, or even an Oregon president or even a presidential campaign, campaign in 2016. Strike that from the record, not anyway. Um, let's see. Now, Governor DeWine has insisted that this provision won't change the standard of care in Ohio. This is not a problem, he told a local news station. If this, if there's only, uh, wait, if there's other things that maybe a doctor has a problem with, 
and it's worked out. Something else does that, does those things. Someone else does those things. Anyway, uh, referring to a loosely written clause that required that the medical professional, uh, when possible, attempt to transfer the patient to a colleague who will provide the request procedure as long as making that referral doesn't violate their con conscience as well. Okay. Let's see, but even if the medical professional does attempt to make the make that referral, a quarter of Ohio's population lives in rural counties where LGBTQ friendly medical care is sparse, as far as I mean, next to our friends in regards to that. Uh, and for and uh, for queer elders living in long term care facilities, options are even slimmer. Uh, local advocates have also uh, gotten a foul on lawmakers' move to insert the clause last minute into the state's massive two-year, 2,400-page budget bill. They know that they could pass this, and they couldn't pass this on its merits as a standalone bill because literally no one is asking for this to be passed. Dominique De Detwilder, a public policy strategist for equal Equality uh, Ohio told the Columbus um, Dispatch. Okay, let's see this is that, but not actually. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, this is uh, basically um, some of what, what some of what's going on in uh, in the. Uh, um, Budget that, uh, as you can see, uh, the present uh, uh, 20, uh, year 22 budget. Now, I kind of want to show you this a little bit, uh, but, um, but it seems like this, if, if they're truly wanting to do this, uh, this might be a good start, but uh, let's find out. Let's see, um, the budget also, okay, first of all, uh, the, uh, okay, man, uh, funding for, uh, funds for wildfire management, water, ma uh, water management, U.S. geological surveys, etc., and investments in clean energy and a climate conser conservation core. The budget also proposes the, to establish a new energy community, community uh, revitalization program, or, or ESRP, which will fund the reclamation of abandonment uh, wells and mines, a priority for administration that shows, sorry, that has showed up in both the American Jobs Plan as well as the President's city budget. Uh, the DOJ's budget is brief, uh, DOI's, excuse me, DOI's budget is brief, categorized by administration's top priority for a department make, makes it difficult to keep track of agency level funding requests. More than a week after the budget, full budget drop, DOI still has, has, has not released a detailed budget justification for all its sub-agencies. TCS will be following the, okay, so tax, so taxpayer for common sense. Now let's try to look up and see uh, who, this, who this was, um, but I couldn't, I was unable to find uh, like, um, well, let's see. That's what about it, though. Uh, let's see. Okay, now let's contact. No, I don't want to do that. But let's see an overview if I can. Now it it seems like because it's like a taxpayer conscious thing, it's kind of like a, it seems to me kind of like a um. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll stand for, okay. But then watch now, they have served as independent voice for American taxpayers since 95. Okay, well, so far so good as far as that part goes. But um, yeah, I, I kind of got into this a little bit um, uh, moments ago, but yeah, taxpayers money to not pay for anything. It doesn't. Uh, in order to get things done, you have to spend first. Um, that requires uh, allocating money, not bringing in money. Uh, bringing in money, um, it only just takes, it takes money out of the, um, 
uh, the economy uh, through taxes, which basically just uh, it makes the dollar valuable and liability that people have to pay, uh, you know, for goods and services. That's basically what, what money is there for. As, uh, it's a paper version of the bartering system. Um, and a lot of things that are like MMT related, um, they are kind of intermixed because there, there have been so many different ways of bartering, whether it be gold, whether it be just, you know, services or whether it be um, selling your labor, like the labor market and other things of nature. So, I mean, I like the fact that they actually have some detail, but at the same time, for me, it's just like, okay, well, detail, it all, that's all it's about. And um, the taxpayers for common sense, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really fit the, the subscription or whatever the heck. Let's say, <clears throat> um, sorry. I was doing a little more digging as far as Greenpeace and uh, who uh, funds them and all this stuff. Ever since my fiance uh, watched the uh, the uh, Planet of the Humans a uh, day or so ago, and since I saw the original um, uh, 2020 uh, version of that same film, uh, narrated by two people, um, I've got really interested in seeing uh, who funds them and who funds their funders and all this stuff. And just so uh, uh, Orca uh, Orca Foundation is is was founded by um, a family uh, that made their money off of tobacco. Uh, the uh, they it's basically owned by uh, R J Reynolds, uh, the tobacco company. And as you can see, uh, they, they go back like uh, recently, as you can see, um, uh, Windward Funds. Uh, see what they are. Let's see, Windhorse seeks to build a more impactful uh, environmental uh, movement to, by connecting people across diversity. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So they're basically into uh, uh, agriculture. That's what I can see on that one. So that's, they're trying to find, uh, I'm guessing, uh, other places to grow agriculture. Tobacco is a form of agriculture. So maybe that's what it is. Let's see with the people, uh, Michigan. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's see. Water City to the shore of Lake Superior. We, the people in Michigan, value the hard work, respect the community. Our hands have built things and, uh, okay. We all deserve a, a decent life and let's see. I didn't really see what it is. It says it builds stuff. Let me see. I thought that one that was about the bot, but I guess this. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, by hard work, respect, uh, respect the community, our hands have built things that change the world and, and Michigan build the American middle class where people are. Uh, Earned enough to buy what they what they uh, what they made. Um, today, many workers. Okay, here we go. Uh, what we do, the long term deep organizational infrastructure. It's critical that okay. So foster stable long lasting alliance. So basically, organizers. It sounds like uh, the engine for the yeah organizers. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we are down home. Let's uh, I can see how that would be. Okay, so probably wait to plans. Okay, so the vision. Uh, we unite to build the power and raise the voices of working people in a small town in a rural North, North Carolina in order to build or in order to take action. Uh, organizers, in other words. Okay. Yeah, so other organizers. Now keep in mind again, this is a a tobacco uh, a tobacco funded place. And this is Wondershed. 
Okay, it's a watershed center. Uh, when this is, uh, at, yeah, as you can see, it's at a group retreats. So I'm not really sure what kind of retreats in regards to like if it's like um, conferences or whatever else, but it seems like more like a country-based version of what like higher ups would go like to Miami or wherever else. So maybe that's a, maybe I misconstrued the whole thing, but that's what it seems like it would be to me. Uh, let's see, okay, so uh, for the uh, respected, okay, Night for Respect Education Fund. Let's see, Night for Respect Education Fund, Voice and Employee, the Mentality Economy, can call it. Okay, so more organizing, it sounds like. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, more organizing it sounds like, okay. Uh, 2018, wealthy private equity firm closed America's uh, favorite toy store. To yeah, okay. And the third, uh, we see US history, destroying the job, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is again, that is like the third or fourth one that is organizing. Here's a thought. They should get a hold of SAP and actually organize their own part, uh, develop a union to them. Anyway, so let's see. Working Family Fund. Uh, now, this one, I believe this is one of a couple of uh, organizations, uh, and all there are other uh, websites on this that look exactly like except uh, different uh, wording. So, basically, the same thing. Uh, they uh, effectively, let's see, yeah. So basically they get money from these people who then get money from grants, I guess, from a tobacco place or uh, yeah, basically a tobacco funded place. I know I'm, I'm putting in more simplistic uh, um dumbed down terms but i'm just trying to like um uh just making it more into how i would see it so yeah they fund uh they get funded by by uh or uh, foundation they they fund um greenpeace i believe let me go back to that if i can yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yes, yeah, so I actually got, I did get this information from um, Influence Watch. By the way, if you like what, if you, if you like what I'm doing here, subscribe to this channel. Become a Patreon. Um, go to uh, wherewearemany.org. Uh, they have a podcast. Also, here I'm on uh, on um, YouTube. Uh, for we are many podcast. Uh, let's see. I go to funding. Okay. Funding. There we go. Yeah. So as I just showed you, they get they get money from tides. Uh, and let's see. Oh, I have to get on that one. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, let's see on that on that same one that I, I just showed you. Uh, there's at least three different ones you can you can go there yourself as well. Um, uh, Orca uh, A R A R C A uh, dot, uh, uh, Foundation, I believe. And you look it up and you'll see like three different web, web, three different websites that are for the same people. So there you go. Anyway, let me check out that. So yeah, the highest foundation, I guess uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation I donated to them. Yeah. They don't get their money from like um, small donations of any kind. They get their money from tobacco companies, you know, places like that. Uh, let's see. And I read a little bit of this other one. 
uh, sigh of relief. Basically, what they're saying is New York uh, people who own who owe money uh, to the departments, uh, the education departments, don't have to pay these people. They now just, and they would just have to pay some other people. So that's basically that's basically the gist of it. They don't cancel anything, nothing in nature. And they just say, oh, well, you, you have to pay these guys now, not them. That's pretty much exactly what's going on as far as I saw anyway. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, get together, develop and implement a wind down plan, uh, plan focus on ensuring borrowers transition smoothly to a different loan servicer. Yes, a co uh, CEO Richard uh, Cardry said in the statement, the wind down plan will also include a transition of specialized activities um, uh, by them currently managed for public service loan forgiveness and teach and teach grants. So yeah, you're going from one place to another. That's all that is. Okay, so let's see. Nope. And let's see. This is obviously from Liberation News from earlier. Uh, Haiti uh, says no to U.S. intervention in wake of uh, Javal Moy's uh, assassination. Now I I I, I, I saw uh, on the on YouTube earlier that uh, they have two Americans in custody for uh, for what happened there. And the assassination by the government here. Uh, I mean, they have resources that apparently uh, the U.S. wants. Uh, I'm not sure what they are, but uh, at least not right now in my head. Um, and that's just a way for them to implement someone there that maybe uh, would uh, assist in getting those natural resources. Um, let's see. In the early hours of July 7th, uh, a couple of days ago, President uh, turned dictator, uh, Jovenel uh, Moise was assassinated at his home in Porta a Prince. While many details of the, of the assassination remain unclear, the political vacuum in Haiti will likely re result in a fiery, oh, sorry, fierce struggle, excuse me, fierce struggle over the direction of the nation in the coming weeks. The Biden administration's initial reactions to the assassination Disturbingly indicates the U.S. government has considered deepening their intervention in Haiti, or Haiti, Haiti, excuse me, which could possibly involve military intervention. Biden's official statement and play, uh, pledges that the United States stands uh, ready to assist. The spokesman for the State Department ominously said the United States is prepared to receive additional requests from Haiti authorities. How they don't request that, quote unquote. Uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, a new US occupation of Haiti or any, any, any type of meddling in the country's sovereign affairs would be a disaster. For over a century, the US military has helped co uh, corporations plunder Haiti, carrying out invasions, supporting coups, and menacing. Uh, anyone who fights for the freedom and independence of the country. Even if they use humanitarian language, the goal of any U.S. intervention remains the same. The assassination comes at a time of incredible uh, political, social, and economic turmoil within Haiti. Increasingly poor living conditions and a grossly in inadequate government response to uh, COVID-19 have left the uh, masses of uh, Haitians completely devoid of economics, uh, economic and social support. Already uh, nearly 60% of the nation's lives is, extreme, is in extreme poverty and the failure of the uh, Moise, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right anyway, um, administration is to uh, administration to rectify or rectify the root causes of such poverty has exacerbated kidnapping for ransom by people struggling to survive. Repression from the Haitian National Police has only served to make the situation increasingly unsafe and unstable for Haitians. 
this along with a wanton power um, grab to extend his tenure in office, he prompted mass protests against Moist. In recent months, his government and opened the possibility that a new force could come to power that outside the control of U.S. imperialism. It is unclear what effect uh, Moise's uh, assassination will have on the popular movement, whose grievances extend far beyond individual crimes of Moise. The assassination also comes just one day after Moise nominated uh, neurosurgeon Ariel Henry as the new prime minister, who, according to the Haitian constitution, would assume power in, in Moise's place if ever necessary. Uh, Henry's uh, Henry, a supporter of the 2004 backed uh, U.S. backed coup in, ha in Haiti, which uh, pushed anti-imperialist President Jean Bertrand uh, Ar 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 Aristide out of ha Haiti, which uh, would sorry, uh, Haiti uh, would be the sixth prime minister in the four years of Moist's term. Despite lack, uh, lacking popular support amongst poor and working uh, Haitians, Moise has ruled by decree since dismissing the Haitian parliament, uh, parliament in January. In uh, January 2020, he has refused to step down from the presidency after his term expired in February 7th, as uh, stipulated by the Haitian constitution, the financial and political support or his regime by the government, uh, U.S. government has been instrumental in maintaining his rule up until this point. In response to the political vacuum now within Haiti, the threat of U.S. intervention to stabilize through occupation looms large. However, it is crucial to understand that the actions of the United States are not done out of concern for the Haitian masses, but for maintaining U.S. power over Haiti. As the first free public uh, black pl uh, republic throughout uh, th throughout history, Haiti has been subject to assault after assault by the United States and other imperialist governments seeking to curb its potential to achieve a democratic and sovereign nation that prioritizes the needs and well-being of poor and working nations. During this critical time for the future of Haiti, it is more important than ever than uh, that people in the United States support the demand of the popular Haitian resistance and that calls for the end of U.S. and, or, and all foreign invention in the country. I agree with that. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think the question here is, and I say not, uh, is the U.S. stalled uh, Afghan government doomed? Yes. The Pentagon Central Command, responsible for U.S. forces in the Middle East, announced yesterday that 90% of its soldiers and support personnel have left Afghanistan. I'm not saying yes because they're leaving. I'm, I'm saying yes because they've stayed too long. And they fucked up in the first place by uh, bringing down a government that they may not have agreed with, but kept stability within, within the um, Middle East. Saddam Hussein. Uh, was it a dictator? More likely, yes, because a lot of people, a lot of governments in that area are because of uh, what we do in, in the world. Um, and they found that being a dictator is uh, much better than um, not being one as far as surviving uh, at the, at the, in, a position, in a position of that nature that are like anti-US imperialists. I, I, Gaddafi, uh, uh, Saddam Hussein and others. I'm not excusing what they did. I'm basically saying that they had to do that in order to keep stability in that region to a certain degree, I think, because the United States was is the, in the business of plundering and taking resources. Uh, we are, we are a consumer-based uh, economy. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, I'm responsible for U.S. forces in the Middle East. And now, Jesse, the 90% of the soldiers and support personnel have left Afghanistan. And, uh, okay, I had, I had the wrong place. Afghanistan not, and not um, uh, Iraq. Excuse my, excuse my ignorance on that one. I should have read a little longer. But doesn't mean I'm. It doesn't mean I'm. It doesn't mean I'm wrong. Uh, this retreat is. Um, 
Yeah, this retreat is occurring against the backdrop of intensifying offensive by the Taliban across the north of Afghanistan, a region which has long been, uh, uh, oh my gosh, long been known as a stronghold for forces aligned with the United States. The Taliban currently controls or, cont or contests approximately three quarters of the country's 421 districts. The U.S. military's hasty retreat from the notorious Bagram, Bagram uh, Air uh, Base uh, July 2nd serves or served as yet another uh, indicator that the Afghan government installed and propped, and propped up by the United States over the course of two decades of occupation is teetering on the edge of collapse. U.S. forces left under the cover of night without bothering to communicate their departure to the Afghan officer tasked with overseeing the transition of the air base into Afghan, uh, into Afghan army, uh, army hands. The par uh, department departing in such a manner clearly illustrates the uh, arrogant colonial attitude of the occupying forces, in addition to the weak weakness of the uh, Afghan government uh, position. So, in other words, they treated the company, they treated the country like a uh, one-night stand. They came in, they fucked them, they left, basically. Um, in many respects, and I, mean, and I, I, I made get censored for this on YouTube. I'm discussing a lot, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> and blah, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, the in many respects, the story of Bagram Air Base's macro, uh, macrocosm of the U.S. war effort against the Afghan people. Bagram was taken over by the United States after the 2001 invasion. At the time, Taliban were forced to retreat uh, from major cities to the countryside. The air base became the nerve center of the U.S. war effort, directing the colonial-style occupation of the country and housing special forces used to, uh, to hunt down Taliban fighters. A deadly drone big program was uh, orchestrated at the airbase. Belgram has also gained the reputation of having one of the most brutal prisons on the planet, housing 5,000 inmates. The CIA ran an infamous torture chamber at the uh, at Belgram Air Base, known as the Salt Pit. A 2014 report by the Senate Intelligence Committee revealed a long list of disgusting crimes against humanity, which took place at the CIA black, black site. Inmates were waterboarded, slammed against walls, uh, subjected to hum uh, humiliating sexual degradation, subjected to noise and uh, torture, and sleep deprivation. Forced to endure freezing temperature uh, in isolated cells without clothes, among many more acts of dep depravity. Survivors of this brutal regime of torture testified to. Uh, Testified to life-changing physical and psychological trauma. Nobody had has to be has been prosecuted for these crimes. The greatest implement, uh, impediment to the uh, to military success in the Taliban was the overwhelming air supremacy enjoyed by the U.S. and Afghan puppet government. The ability to rapidly deploy uh, combat force to uh, by helicopter, drone strikes, and, uh, and bombing campaigns had limited the effectiveness of Taliban fighters outside of, rural, of their rural-based areas. A massive um, imbalance of power in the airway has allowed the unpopular Afghan government to survive for as long as it has. Withdrawal of U.S. Contractor, contractors and pilots is a fatal blow to the Afghan Air Force. The Afghan military cannot repair U.S.-made equipment on their own. They've been there for how many years? They should know, but anyway. Uh, morale within the Afghan military uh, has sunk to an abysmal level as exemplified by the rout uh, of 1,600 soldiers who fled into neighboring uh, Tajik Tajikistan in recent weeks. Defeat after defeat for the Afghan military is creating a situation in the country where defections and collapses are widespread. The northern offense by the Taliban indicates that the that that uh, indicates that they have initiated an initiative. Okay. Uh, they have initiative. Um, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay, lock in place. Uh, the case of initiative in many cases, opposing Afghan government forces put, put up little to no uh, resistance to an attack. Uh, hardline mil uh, militarists in the United States are pointing to, uh, to string up Taliban victories over the uh, Afghan government as reason to call out the withdrawal, arguing that the Taliban cannot be allowed to take over the country. But the Taliban strengthen come less than less from popular support for their ultra reactionary political program that is from their, their ability to strike blows against the Afghan government widely recognized as illegitimate and a puppet of the United States. And now it is begun, now it is becoming increasingly clear the United States is giving up on the government to be uh, they themselves installed. Okay. Okay, so this is from obviously from World Social's website. It's where I get a lot of my news. Um, even uh, with um, Influence Watch and uh, and uh, uh, the website with um, the fact check, I think it was .com or .org, one of the two, said that World Social's website has a uh, has a, uh, a at least a high, somewhat like medium to high. Um, uh, credibility rating, which means about 95% of what they say is true and not um, propaganda necessarily as far as the part goes. But anyway, um, let's see. So scientists demolish Wuhan lab conspiracy theory of coronavirus origins. As you can see, it's by Andre Damon. Uh, on Wednesday, the 21st of the world's leading uh, on Wednesday, 20, uh, the yeah okay. So uh, on Wednesday, uh, the 20, uh, 21 of the world's leading experts on the origins of infectious diseases published a paper demolishing the conspiracy theory promoted by the Biden administration and U.S. newspapers that COVID-19 was a man-made virus. Uh, this guy apparently, or at least he was one of a few uh, writers. Get more water. The paper was written by an internal uh, international team of biologists and virologists led by Professor Edwin Holmes from the University of Sydney and Professor Andrew uh, Rambout, Rambout from the University of Edinburgh. Among the co-authors, uh, our Georgetown University virologist, uh, Dr. Angela Rasmussen and Christian D. Uh, G., excuse me, G. Anderson, Director of Infection Disease uh, Geno Genomics and, uh, at Scripps Research Translational uh, Institute. The paper uh, summarizes the existing uh, scientific evidence for the origin of the SARS COVID 2 virus and, ca and causes COVID-19 concluding, concluded is zoonic, zoonotic, a transfer from an animal source to human, the paper entitled The Origins of SARS and COVID-2. A critical review was published as a preprint on uh, Zenadu. Uh, in quotes, our uh, careful and critical analysis of uh, the currently available data provide, provided no evidence for the idea that SARS-CoV-2 originated in a laboratory home set. There is no evidence that there are early, ca uh, early cases that any connection uh, to a Wuhan uh, Institute of, uh, of Virology or WIB uh, in contrast to the clear a, uh, epidemiological uh, and, yeah, anyway, links to animal marks, uh, markets in Wuhan nor evidence that WIB possesses or worked on a progenerator of SARS-CoV-2 prior to the pandemic, the uh, scientists wrote. Rather than argue that there is a substantial body of scientific evidence supporting a zoonotic, uh, zoonotic uh, origin for SARS-CoV-2, the Wuhan lab uh, conspiracy theory was originally uh, originated in January of 2020 by fascist Steve Bannon and his allies among right-wing Chinese 
uh, expatriates uh, such as Miles Lua, who uh, claimed in the words of Trump advisor Peter Navarro, Navarro that COVID-19 was the weaponized virus. Uh, this year, that theory was revised and given a pseudo-scientific presentation by Nicholas Wade, who, in an article published in the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, presented a narrative in which U.S. and Chinese scientists uh, created um, SARS-CoV-2 uh, through gain-function uh, experiments at the Wuhan Institute, Institute of Virology. Wade is infamous for racist and pseudoscientist and scientific book published in 2014. Wade narrative, uh, Wade's narrative was embraced by the New York Times, Washington Post, and Wall Street Journal, all of which published editorials or uh, major op-eds citing Wade without explaining, explaining his background, according to, a Wade, according to Wade, leading U.S., Chinese, and other international scientists uh, secretly collaborating on gain of function research. I believe that's what uh, Rand, was Rand, Paul? Yeah, Rand Paul has been coming up about in Congress, I think Congress, uh, and other international scientists secretly collaborated on gain and uh, function research, accidentally released the virus, then covered up the incident so effectively that no evidence of the conspiracy can be found to this day. The Wuhan lab theory consisted of piling speculative um, le uh, leaps on top of one another and uh, claiming they add up to a convincing argument. The scientist responds uh, take each of these speculations for which there is no evidence and begin with and explain their impossibility. The paper begins by noting that the transfer of animal diseases to humans has been de uh, definitely shut down or shut to, shown to, excuse me, shown to have caused in nearly all previous pandemics. Um, yeah, uh, SARS CoV 2 is the ninth document coronavirus that affects humans and the seventh identified in the last 20 years in states. All previous human coronaviruses have zoonotic origins as, have, as, as the vast majority of human viruses. The paper adds the emergence of COVID, uh, sorry, SARS CoV 2 bears several signatures of these prior zoonotic events. It displays clear similarities to uh, SARS-CoV that spilled over into humans in Fashan, uh, Guangdong province, China in November 2002, and again in Guangzhou, Guangzhou I think, um, Guangdong Gong province in 2003. I apologize by murdering that name. Uh, the authors further note that the SARS-CoV-2 virus does not respond, resemble any virus that could theoretically be used as a backbone to create a new virus. The paper adds, under any uh, laboratory escape scenario, SARS-CoV-2 would have been uh, would have to been present in laboratory prior to the pandemic. Yet no evidence exists to support such a motion, and no uh, sequence has been identified that could have served as precursor. The scientists note that while gain of function research is typically carried out in laboratory mice, the virus is not well adapted to rodents, indicating that SARS-CoV-2 is highly unlikely to have been acquired by laboratory workers in the course of a viral uh, path pathogenous uh, or gain of function uh, experiments. The paper adds that since uh, its emergence, SARS-CoV-2 has experienced repeated sweeps of mutations that have increased uh, viral fitness, reputing the claim that COVID-19 was somehow originally uh, optimized to uh, infect humans. Combined, these findings show that no specific human pre-adaptation was required for the emergence uh, or early spread of SARS-CoV-2, I keep saying COVID, more COV-2, and the claim that, uh, virus, that the virus was already highly adapted to the human host is without validity. 
As scientists concluded, or conclude, as far the as for the vast majority of human viruses, the most uh, parasimilous uh, explanation for the uh, origins of COVID, uh, God, saying COVID, <laughs> SARS-CoV-2, is a zoonotic event. The documented uh, epidemiologist, uh, ep epidemiological uh, history of the virus is comparable to the uh, previous animal market associated outbreaks of coronaviruses with a simple route for human exposure. The conclusions of the paper by some of the world's leading scientists confirm the analysis made by the World Social website included, including in a three-part series published last month, and quotes how science demolished the right uh, the right wing fiction of the Wuhan lead lab leak as the source of coronavirus. The publication of the paper takes place against the backdrop of major uh, anticipation of the campaign in the US media to blame China for the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> the, uh, the, on Wednesday, the Washington Post published a, an a, a auditorial endorsing, editorial endorsing an official US government investigation into the pandemic. The uh, newspaper, uh, which speaks for dominant uh, which speaks for dominant sections of the American ruling class, made clear that the focus of the investigation should not be or should be not the U.S. government's uh, criminal response that led to uh, hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths, but an effort to blame China for the pandemic. Uh, China's resistance in a lingering obstacle the Post complained it alleges that the uh, Chinese government has initiated a massive campaign of denial, cover-up, diversions, delay, and disinformation. No, it is Washington that denied the pandemic, covered it up, delayed, and spread mis disinformation as a result of the actions of U.S. capitalism. Somewhere between 600,000 and 1 million Americans are dead. If Washington wants to draw lessons from a global catastrophe, it should look in the mirror. Over the last, uh, over the past uh, year, document, documentary investigations and witness testimony have been have made clear that the U.S. government deliberately covered up the spread of the pandemic, allowing it to, uh, to rapidly spread throughout the country and become massively entrenched by the time that public was even aware of the of the dangers. Beginning in April of 2020, the Trump administration defied its own public health experts to reopen businesses while the pandemic was still raging. A policy continued and intensified public under Biden. The, with the resurgence of the pandemic caused by the Delta variant, governments arose, uh, I'm sorry, governments around the world are doubling down on the demand that the population live with the COVID 19 pandemic. In the UK, the Johnson uh, uh, government is openly carrying out a policy that, is, that it acknowledges will lead to a surge of COVID-19 cases, hospitalization, and deaths. But the Johnson government is only uh, expressing and more uh, developed from the policy of every capitalist government, which aimed uh, aims to sacrifice human lives to protect for to the protection of corporate profits. The Wuhan lab theory has never been a real, uh, a real theory in the sense of a scientific explanation rooted uh, in empirical evidence. It is a theory driven by purely uh, political consideration to deflect attention from those responsible to justify the continuation of a policy that has led to millions of deaths and to serve as ammunition in the geopolitical conflict uh, with China. But the efforts to blame China for deaths caused by the insatiable greed and sociopathic tendencies of American capitalism will be treated by working people and the world over with scorn. Workers in the United States and internationally as they enter into struggle in defense of their lives and livelihoods will put the blame where it belongs on the ruling class and the capitalist system it defends. 
Okay, so let's see, what does this say? I forgot actually. Um, now the Arizona Secretary of State requests investigation into Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani for possible election interference. No kidding. I love that whole thing. Oh, God. Uh, on his face. Anyway. Now. Former President Donald Trump and alleged attorney Rudy Giuliani. I uh, have been down bad uh, since the last time I Trump is apparently uh, still fixating on what was probably the biggest L of his life. And Giuliani is currently the subject of multiple state, state and federal investigations. The hit keep coming as Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs requested the state attorney general launch an investigation into potential efforts by Trump. Giuliani and several others to interfere with the state's, the state's vote counting last November. Uh, CBS News uh, reports Hobbs sent a letter and to State Attorney General Mark uh, Bernovich uh, saying the alleged con conduct by Trump, um, by Trump, Giuliani, and lawyer Sidney Powell and Arizona Republican uh, Party Chair Kelly Ward may have violated the state law regarding uh, interference with election officials. Arizona law, uh, Arizona law protects uh, election officials from those who would seek to interfere with their sacred duties to as, uh, ascertain and certify the rule and the, the will of the voters, Hobbs wrote in the letter at the polling place this law protects the right to vote at the counter uh, counting center. It protects the accuracy of results free from political interference from uh, but what protection exists for officials to fulfill their duties despite threats of political uh, redistribution well, I'm sorry uh, retribution if the person empowered by the uh, power to enforce the law, is unwilling to do the same. Hobbs uh, cites a report uh, by Arizona Republic, uh, Republic the, that uh, Arizona Republic that detail possible attempts by Giuliani, Trump, uh, and war to interfere with the vote countering uh, process. Trump attempted to contact then 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 chairman of the Mar Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, Clint Hickman. In the week following the election, uh, but his calls went went to voicemail. Um, it was pro it was reported that Giuliani also attempted to contact multiple Maricopa supervisors, but he too was sent to voicemail. The Republican, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, Arizona Republic also obtained text messages board sent to the board of supervisor with with one straight up uh, straight up saying. We need you to stop counting. Ward reportedly also texted Hickman. I know you don't want to, but remember as the guy who led the charge to certify a fraudulent election. Um, wait a minute. You don't want to be, sorry, you don't want to be remembered as the guy who, yeah, okay. Uh, Hobbs said in, a, in, a, in her letter that these attempts of, uh, all involve clear efforts to induce supervisors to refuse to comply with their duties and called uh, Ward's text messages to Hickman in an effort to convince him not to fulfill the board's statutory duty to canvass the election. Uh, it's not like any of these particular shocking given that we already know Trump called Georgia's Secretary of State in January and asked him to find votes. Giuliani's role in peddling Trump's election lies has resulted in this license to practice law being uh, law being suspended in New York and Washington. It turns out they really aren't the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing for now because I want to uh, read uh, talk MMT. Uh, I will be reading. Oh, I need to again. Um, there we go. I will be reading from uh, MMT does does do policy. 
And this is from a uh, new economic perspective.org. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, all right. Anyway, so let's see, this is by L. Randall Ray. <clears throat> I've seen um, some pretty bizarre claims by MMTers. There are Tea Partiers, barely left of center, who are not interested in policy. Who, are, who ignore inequality, who are only interested in reducing taxes on uh, MTRs, ignore the fraud of the banksters. They are at least one issue advocates for a particular view on money, taxes, and employment. Uh, I have no idea where critics get this stuff. I'm convinced they, are, they made it up. Ignorance of or, on, or dishonesty, probably both. <clears throat> you can tell I'm moving my voice here. Um, for anyone who wants to disabuse dis, 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 herself of uh, such nonsense, please go to uh, levy.org, uh, click on scholars, click on uh, his name, and find uh, right in uh, front of your face a few hundred pieces on policy that he wrote, yes, inequality, yes, explo explosion of uh, in incarceration, yes, the war on poverty, uh, poverty, uh, poverty's failure, and so on. Stephanie Kelton just reminded me of an interview I gave in December to Travis Strawn, who happens to be a former student. He was uh, writing for the uh, Seven Pillars Institute. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not sure what it is. Judge for yourself if it is garden variety, liberal, or let alone Tea Party. Okay, so this is basically literally a interview that they did. Okay, uh, I don't read interviews. Um, it's not necessarily all that much. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can you can go to uh, neweconomicperspective.org and look up uh, NMT does does do policy by L. Randall Ray, uh, April twenty third, uh, twenty fourteen. I didn't was I didn't I thought it would be like his usual stuff that, that I have been. Uh, um, I have it right now. Anyway, let's see. Well, I think uh, because there was so much reading for me to do on this or reporting or however you want to look at it, um, I think the other thing I'm going to do now is uh, say thank you for uh, for watching and now listening. Uh, please uh, visit uh, forwearemany.org. Uh, please uh, watch him here on YouTube at For We Are Many podcast, uh, and also look up uh, in the Tea Party System uh, uh, You can go to uh, Teespring. I look up Conversation with Socialist and uh, Green Party and Socialist News. Uh, yes, um, on Teespring, um, as I show as I showed you uh, in the beginning of this. Uh, also become a uh, a uh, pledge on my anchor on my anchor well anchor yeah uh, anchor.fm slash uh, talk to NMT underscore uh, financially anyway I hope you guys have a good Friday I hope you guys uh, have a good weekend I will talk to you mo uh, Monday and maybe I'll have more stuff I don't know yet we'll find out uh, but either way have a good night and have a good weekend.